I followed my dreams and opened an antique store to have adventures and spend time as a family. Sometimes you have to climb a mountain and open some new doors to find the treasures inside. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. So on special request from my next door neighbor who's thinking about doing this um, themselves, I'm going to do a little series on how to replace the flooring in your house. We are going to be replacing carpet with laminate flooring that actually looks like hardwood plank. Um, the floor basically was starting to get stained and in not such great shape so my son's in here helping with his sister's room and we're going to get it all cleared out. And uh, I'm going to start pulling the baseboards off and uh, getting ready to take the carpet out. So. We have currently a Berber carpeting, which has been in the house for about 15 years. Uh, stood up pretty well, but there's a few spots where there's some stains and some traffic wear that's just not coming out. And my daughter wants new floors, right, honey? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to be doing uh, wood floors in the kids' room. Jason, are you excited about your room? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> step number one, we're going to show you taking the baseboards off. So the tools I'm using to remove the baseboard are as follows. A box cutter, a pellet knife, or a spreader. Metal one will work nicely, and a hammer. So let me show you what we're gonna do with these tools to loosen the baseboard. So we've painted this room uh, a couple times. It was originally kind of like the baseboard here, light color. And um, we know that there's kind of paint that's run along the inside here. So what you do with the box cutter is you run it right along the edge so that when you go to pull this off, it doesn't take a whole bunch of your paint off the wall as well. All you're gonna do is basically take the uh, baseboard off and it should protect your wall because we don't wanna be repainting a whole bunch if we don't have to. So I'm gonna loosen that off and I'm gonna run the length of the baseboard. Next, what I'm gonna do is take the palette knife and I'm gonna slowly kind of wedge it in and I'm gonna tap it with the hammer just to kind of get it behind the baseboard. So inside my daughter's closet, I have managed to pull all the baseboard away. As you can see, the baseboard is off. That's where it was painted before, and the baseboard's removed. I've labeled them all with a C for closet, and I'm gonna label all around her room, the perimeter, with a one, two, three, four, and five for each uh, area of the wall that it was on just so I know where it all goes back in place so it makes it easier because otherwise if you don't label it you're going to run into a bit of a problem later on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the paint off the top here with the knife and I'm going to cl clip these nails off on the back. Now I'm not going to pound them back through because they've been painted over nicely. I'm just going to snip them right at the base um, and then what we're going to do is just put new nails through or adhesive to hold these on when the time comes. So time to scrape some paint. Okay, so what we're going to do is just take the excess paint off so that when we go to reinstall this, we don't have a lot of excess paint to worry about. We just have to worry about a nice clean job. So we're going to get all the extra paint off so this is nice and even and flush all on the top. And we're going to do that to all the pieces. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to clip the old nails off. And I'm going to hold it so it doesn't go flying away. And we're going to take these and put them somewhere safe for now until we can throw them out so they don't end up hurting my daughter's feet when she walks around in here later on. So I'm going to go around and clip all the old nails off. If I was just um, doing a repair to the carpet, I could probably just leave them in and push it back in the old holes. But this is going to be moving up probably about a half inch or so with the new floor. So we're going to end up putting new nails or new adhesive on the back. So those can come off. So I've got my daughter's room pretty much cleared out. Just have to take the bookcase out and it's pretty well done. So the next step is going to be taking the carpet off the floor. And uh, that's basically what I've got to do. So I'm going to get my box cutter and start cutting into strips so I can roll it up easier and haul it downstairs. And then make sure I prep the floor and get it ready for the wood to go on. So on to the next step, which is removing carpet. So unless you're saving the carpet for some other purpose and you need it in a big giant piece, um, it can be really difficult to move. So what I'm going to do is cut it in long strips all the way along so I can roll them up and make it easier to take out. So. We're not reusing the carpet, so it's getting cut up so I can take it to the bin. And then there's the little stuff too, like taking the brackets off the floor that hold the closet door in place. So I'm gonna loosen these guys off and get it ready so I can roll up the carpet. Hey, 
Hey, Abigail and Jason, come check out your room, Abigail. Whoa. Whoa, Whoa can we come in here? Uh, no, there's still some sharp nails sticking up. Yeah, not over there. So, do you like it? Should we leave it blue? Uh, no thanks. Uh, I think we should I'd put rather some not. Wood. Do you know what the blue stuff is? Um, no, what is it? It's styrofoam. called... Do you know what it is, Jason? No, I just think it's styrofoam. Yeah, no, it's not styrofoam. It's like it's like a uh, thick cloth. It's called underlay. They put it underneath your carpet so it makes it nice and squishy. And also so when you guys are noisy jumping on your beds, right, which you never do, that we can't hear you downstairs. <laughs> so I'm going to take this all out. I'll call you back, guys back up when it's all wood, okay? Okay. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. So the next thing I'm going to take out mainly just for safety is the carpet strip. These are all little nails that are used to hold the carpet in place. I'm going to pull these up. They're held in with big nails, like right there. So I'm going to pull all these strips up just so if the kids want to come in and watch, they're not going to hurt themselves. And just working my way along until I get all the nails out. And then it's free. And I got to do that all around the room. So my daughter decided that she wanted to come in and see what was what dad was up to. So what do you think, honey? It's awesome. Yeah, and what do you like the best about it so far? It's squishy. It's squishy? Well, it won't be squishy for long. We're putting in hardwood. Oh. Yeah, but you can enjoy the squishiness while it lasts. And this is the underlay that we're using. It's Traffic Master. It's a two-in-one foam underlay. And uh, what it does is it dampens the sound, but it also provides a bit of thermal insulation as well. Um, you want to be putting this over top of your wood before you put your floor down. Uh, you can use this under uh, laminate or hardwood, but um, yeah, that's going in next. So I've laid the underlay down and uh, one thing I have to do next is uh, this is a sample piece of wood that I have. This is the type of flooring we're going to use. But you can see it wouldn't fit underneath the uh, trim. This is the trim that goes around the closet. It won't fit around the trim so what you have to do is you have to measure and then mark off where to cut because we're going to actually have to cut this so the wood will fit underneath so i have to take that much wood off and cut it with a handsaw all the way across so that when i put the flooring in, i can slide it kind of like that underneath and then put the uh, baseboard back on so that's what I'm doing next, measuring all around the wood and getting ready to cut. So it's going to be something like this. The wood's going to come up to here. The transition piece is going to get screwed on. That's the outer edge there. And this will sit on top. So I'm going to start getting the, um, the holder, the little clip in place there, so it's ready to go once I have the wood in. Okay, so I'm going to cut. And I'm going to go slow at first, so I make sure I get it on the line. Okay, it's coming. Just a little bit more to go. It's starting to come out. to vacuum up all this dust that's here now but you can see I've got my little sample board here <laughs> you can see I've got the little sample board and it now fits underneath so I've got it so the wood goes underneath and uh, what you do is you basically just fill it with silicone or with a finishing uh, compound once it's all done but I have to do that to all the door jams in the room and uh, get ready for the wood so the underlay is more or less in place I've got my daughter's room emptied out and just about ready for wood. 
You don't have to do this, but because uh, this stuff comes with sticky tape attached to it, but I did lay an extra uh, bead of duct tape on there just so it would stay together nice and well. And I've done it in the hallway as well here. So I'm going to do these two rooms first. So there's our washroom. We did the tiles last year. We're going to do uh, just the hallway and my daughter's room for the time being. So I've taken up to the stairwell off. Um, this is my sample piece of wood here. And I'm making sure that the door still clears and closes with a little bit of a gap underneath. That should be just fine. That's going to look uh, quite good. So the other thing that you're going to need is going to be a saw. I'm going to be using my Makita compound miter saw. This is great for doing baseboards because you can cut angles. It's really easy to set. You've got your set right there. So if you want to do 45, uh, I'm setting it to zero because I'll be cutting straight across for the time being. But it's nice because you can clamp your wood in place and make for a nice safe workspace. So this is going to be the one I'm using to cut the boards down and it has a dust collection bag. So it will keep things a little bit tidier than if I didn't have a dust bag on there. So that's my saw. Now just to wait for the wood. So the first layer of wood is going down. What do you think, Abigail? It's beautiful. Yeah, it's getting there. So then we start layering the next bit of wood and this actually just clicks into place. So it's pretty easy to do. The way this is designed, it actually just slips in and drops down and it interlocks. So I'm gonna actually slide that over and then start laying the other pieces in. And so here's a trick. When you're cutting off, you can use your scraps uh, as your pieces start the other side because you do want to have an overlap so that they are not uh, lined straight across. If you've ever played with Lego before, if you don't overlap them, they're not sturdy. So your scrap from one side becomes the start of the other and vice versa and you just keep going and um, ideally there's very little waste. Never hurts to have some extra help. Okay, you gotta do the other side too so it's even. And this is a really handy piece to have. It's a little block of wood, it's a scrap, but basically um, you need it. So if the board isn't in all the way, Jason, do you wanna give it a little tap? My son's gonna help me out. It just kind of tightens up the, uh, the, the uh, seam here. So you kind of tap all along until it's nice and tight. Um, definitely something you wanna use. So this is about as far as we've gotten so far. Started laying the planks and cutting. My son is helping me sweep up helping build his sister's room, what a good boy. And uh, we're just working our way across. So I'm gonna keep going until uh, we've got basically the wood all the way across. So this spot here is gonna be a little bit tricky. What I have to do is measure down to my uh, metal rail that I put on that's just gonna hold the um, joining strip there. So it is six and a half inches long and then I'm gonna have to notch it so it'll fit underneath the door jamb. So I'm gonna cut my length first and then notch it after. And there it is. I've got my notch cut out, so hopefully it fits in perfect. Like a glove. So now that I'm getting to the other edge of the wall, it gets tricky because we have a smaller gap than what we have wood, which means I have to cut the board lengthwise. Uh, I'm going to use my jigsaw for that. Um, and with this piece here, I'm essentially going to cut sort of an L shape so I can use the full length of the board. So it means I have to measure from there all the way down to here, and then I'm gonna try and slide or tap the board into place. So I have penciled out the rough shape. That's a little piece that I need to cut out there, uh, right in that area. So I'm gonna chop it out and uh, see if I can fit this board in. So the board is notched out. Let's hope that it fits. And now for the baseboard. So here it is. What do you think, honey? This is what it is. We have the flooring in, the baseboard is all put back in. Uh, we have to silicone still along the top. We're just sweeping and getting ready, and then we can start decorating your room up again. Yay! Yeah, and what do you think the wood's gonna be like? Uh, I think the wood's gonna be awesome. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Well, thanks for your help, honey. Now I, Dad has to move on to the hallway, but I think a job well done. And there we go, the floor is done. And it's just in time too, because the kids are gonna be back from their grandma's place 
and I'm hoping that they're going to be very surprised with how their rooms look now. And since I was on a roll with my daughter's room, I thought while my son was away today, I would get his room done too. So I've got two rooms done in the hallway and uh, it's looking pretty good. So this will be the surprise when he gets home today. Hopefully he's going to love it. And to top off his bedroom, I thought I'd do a little painting for him of his favorite stuffed animal. Okay, why don't you open the door and check out your new room. <laughs> this is not the same. That's about the reaction I was looking for. Oh, yeah. And although it was a lot of work over the last couple days, I think it turned out pretty good. My son's room came together nicely and I even had a chance to repaint his walls. My daughter's room turned out great as well, a happy little place for a happy little girl. I really hope you guys enjoy watching these little uh, adventures. Yeah, hopefully this comes in helpful for you guys. But thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.